We've already talked about the basic rules of magnetism and some of the ways we use it in science and technology. But the most exciting applications of magnetism are in the new field of nanotechnology. Advances in nanomagnetism are beginning to change the way we use computers and electronics, practice medicine, and even create artwork. We saw earlier that information can be stored by magnetizing very small regions of a hard disk or some other storage medium. Each of these regions corresponds to one unit of information called a bit. If we want to store more data in a smaller device, we have to reduce the size of these regions. Magnetic regions are each composed of small, densely packed particles called grains. If we make the grains smaller, the magnetic regions get smaller too. But if we try to make them too small, we run into an obstacle. Ambient heat causes atoms and small particles to constantly and randomly vibrate. It's possible for a very small grain to pick up enough energy from these vibrations to reverse the direction of its magnetic field. The smaller the particles, the more likely this is to happen. This is called the superparamagnetic effect, and it's a big problem for really tiny grains. If enough of the grains in a magnetic region get knocked around, the whole region may change its polarity. This causes the value of the bit to change between 1 and a 0, which is called bit flipping. The density of the information on the disk is limited by the size of the magnetic regions. This, in turn, is limited by how small we can make the grains before they become vulnerable to the superparamagnetic effect, which cause bit flipping. Right now, magnetic memory, like the hard drive in your computer, is limited to about 19 gigabytes per square inch. If we could reduce the surface area without reducing the volume of the individual magnetic regions, we could fit more of them into a smaller disk and store information in less space. This is done by replacing the flat magnetic regions with densely packed vertical cylinders on the disk. Each cylinder represents one bit. The goal is to increase their height while keeping their cross section as small as possible. This way, the magnetic regions have enough volume to keep them stable while still presenting a small surface area to the reed head. For this to work, the cylinders have to be very small and precisely arranged. The Center for Hierarchical Manufacturing at UMass Amherst is developing a nanoporous template which could hold tiny magnetic wires that would act as magnetic regions. The template forces the wires into a very precise pattern. The process relies on an important property of nanoscale materials called self-assembly. Under the right conditions, certain types of molecules organize themselves into shapes and patterns. The template uses a type of polymer that arranges itself into a regular pattern of cylinders when it's heated. The cylinders are dissolved to create pores. Then, we deposit metal into those pores. These nanoporous templates could vastly improve computer memory. In a magnetic material, the atoms clump together into magnetic domains. Each domain has its own field. If the material is not magnetized, the magnetic fields are arranged randomly and cancel each other out. When the material becomes magnetized, the domains line up, but not perfectly. There is still some cancellation. To make the magnet more powerful, we have to improve the alignment of its domains. It is possible to arrange magnetic materials so that their atoms work together. This is caused by the principle of exchange coupling, which requires that we keep the particles in a very precise position and alignment. This is difficult, but new nanomaterials are being developed to hold them in place. These magnets could also be manufactured as pastes and films that could be built directly into microchips instead of being soldered onto circuit boards. Medical applications of magnetism and nanotechnology may be the most exciting and inspiring of all. Right now, many disease detection and treatment methods are invasive and damaging. Nanomagnetism offers us harmless, non-invasive, and less traumatic alternatives. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is very useful for detecting cancer, but it has trouble finding the smallest and most easily treatable tumors. Scientists are trying to increase the sensitivity of MRIs by attaching slightly magnetic nanoparticles to the cancer cells. 
These nanoparticles are called contrast agents because they make even tiny tumors show up clearly in the MRI. One way of creating these contrast agents is to take a harmless virus whose outer shell bonds easily with metal ions. The virus is coated with magnetic particles and then with other particles that bond with cancer cells so that it will stick to any tumors that it comes across. When a tumor becomes surrounded by these tiny magnetic viruses, it is very easy to spot with an MRI machine. Nanomagnetism is also opening up new methods of treatment for cancer and tumors. One technique uses tiny bits of magnetic rust to target and destroy cancer. First, we take iron oxide particles 500 times smaller than a red blood cell and give them a special coating that makes sure they won't clump together and that they'll be absorbed by cancer cells. When these coated particles are injected directly into a tumor, they spread out in the spaces between the tumor cells. Next, we apply an alternating magnetic field. The magnetic field makes the particles vibrate quickly, working themselves deeper into the cracks between the cells and even helping them get absorbed into the cells. But the vibrations also cause them to heat up. As the particles get warmer and warmer, the heat destroys the cancer. The waste is cleaned up by the body's natural systems. Nanomagnetism could even make life easier for diabetics and other people who have to inject themselves with medicine. Future technology could make it possible for them to release drugs into their system with nothing but an external field. One possible technique is to implant a small capsule of medicine wrapped in a porous membrane. The pores are filled with a gel that contains tiny magnetic particles. When an alternating magnetic field is applied, the particles in the gel start vibrating and heat the gel up. The gel contracts, opening the pores and letting the drug particles escape into the bloodstream. When the magnetic field is turned off, the gel cools down and expands to fill the pores so that drug delivery is stopped. Nanomagnetic effects can also be used to create artwork. Ferrofluids are magnetic liquids that are being used by artists like Sachiko Kodama to create cool effects because they react to magnetic fields. Ferrofluids are attracted to magnetic objects and in a strong magnetic field they form spikes and ridges that follow field lines. The liquid will follow a moving magnet or respond to changing current in an electromagnet. A ferrofluid is made by suspending tiny particles of iron, hematite, or some other magnetic metal in oil. The particles are coated in a surfactant so they won't clump together, otherwise a strong magnet could pull them right out of the oil. The spikes come from a complex interaction of forces. The magnetic force wants the fluid to follow the field lines, and the surface tension wants to make its surface area as small as possible. A ferrofluid's characteristic spikes are the compromise. If we strengthen the magnetic field by bringing the magnet closer or adding another magnet, the number of spikes increases. We are seeing the magnetic field lines in three dimensions. When the field is stronger, the lines are more densely concentrated. If we weaken the magnetic field, the number of spikes decreases and they are further apart. The magnetic field lines are less densely concentrated. If you place a large screw in the ferrofluids and apply magnetism, the fluid will climb up the threads. This is because the magnetic field is focused by the shape of the thread and is stronger along its sharp edge. These demonstrations are easy to do with some ferrofluid and neodymium magnets. Proper safety precautions should be taken. Ferrofluid is not hazardous or toxic, but it is messy, can stain clothing, cause mild skin irritation, and is flammable. When combined with strong magnetic fields, it can behave unpredictably, so always wear gloves and safety glasses when handling. It can usually be cleaned up with water and household cleaners, but you should not use it around nice furniture, carpets, or fabrics. Ferrofluids have many practical applications, such as seals held in place by magnetism to keep dust out of hard drives and delicate machinery, 
or as bearings to keep audio speakers from overheating as the coil moves back and forth. However, our interest now is in ferrofluids as art media. Because they can be manipulated with magnetism and change their shape in such fascinating ways, ferrofluids promise to open new avenues of human expression. Working with ferrofluids on a large glass surface, these artists are using powerful neodymium magnets held underneath to draw the fluid out in long tendrils, create bold shapes, and interact with colored inks and other materials. Very subtle effects can be created depending on the strength and shape of the magnetic field.